Hello, today's video is going to be a comparison of 100 watt capable USB-C power delivery cables. At 100 watts each, we only need 30 million of these to make a time machine. There are tons of cables on the market, and this is just a small offering, but I have to start somewhere. This video will cover 10 USB-C to USB-C cables, and links will be down in the description, as usual. The purpose of this video is to figure out which cable is going to do the best job of charging your device. The main metric for determining charging efficiency is wire resistance. The lower the resistance, the better the efficiency of the cable. I have set up a test jig to get a precise resistance measurement for each cable using my Siglent electronic load and DC power supply. Basically, we can set a constant current through the cable and measure the voltage drop of the cable and using some Ohm's law calculate the resistance. Thankfully, the Siglent meter does all this math automatically. So without further introduction, let's take a look at one cable to go through the process. First is a 10 foot long anchor cloth sheath cable. The cable measured 96 grams and is strictly a charging cable with 100 watt capability. Here's the cable set up in our resistance measurement apparatus. The resistance is checked on both the positive and negative leads of the cable, and these values are added together for the total resistance of the cable. This first cable measured 115 milliohms on the positive conductor and 89 milliohms on the negative conductor for a total resistance of 0.204 ohms. If we do some basic math, we can find that the power loss of this cable is therefore about 5 watts when it's being used at its full 100 watt charging capability. We can absolutely calculate the loss at other charge levels too, but 100 watts is the worst case. For the remaining cables, here's a table of brands and capabilities for each. This is a pretty general range of cables from 1 foot to 10 foot and they have various capabilities in terms of performance. On this first summary of data, we can see that the cable versus coughs graph puts the Inu, Blauback, and Nectec cables as the best value per foot, and the Zixis cable as the most expensive cable per foot. The four more expensive offerings also carry high-speed data. Here's a table of the cable weights, just for reference information. The lightest cable is also the thinnest on the outside, which is the free Bassius cable. In this graph, we get into what we were all here to see, which cable ended up being the most efficient for charging. The high power loss means the cable is less efficient at charging. So the best cable is Zixis. The worst performer is Blauback. It looks like for the most part, the cables all sit around two areas though. Putting it all together, here's a chart with the power loss versus value of the cable. This will help optimize which cable offers the best economic value and power efficiency. So it looks like the Bassius cable presents the best value and resistance balance. The Uni is a solid runner up. The Zixis cable, offers the lowest resistance and therefore the most efficient charge, but is also the most expensive. All of the Data Plus cables were in the same range though. The Blauback and Inu cables are very inexpensive, but are not very efficient. The anchor is longer, so its higher loss was expected. Basically, use the shortest cable possible. So that's about it for the charging efficiency of 10 USB-C cables. And that should answer the question that yes, the cable matters. If one of these looks like it will do the trick for you, check out the link in the description. If you have suggestions for another round, let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to do another round once I have enough suggestions. You know, by now I already have enough cables to do another round. Good movie, by the way. As usual, thank you very much for watching and sticking around to the end of the video. If you really like this one, please hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. Thanks again, and bye.